to take your seat. Like, nah, I, I really don't have much to say on this because I, I, I thought it was going to be a case of Leeds seeing an opportunity in City and kind of trying to take advantage in City capitalising because they're just, they're just better, they're just a better team. And I just thought City would kind of see Leeds thinking they could win something and, and just punish them. And it was the opposite, to be fair. I think Leeds stuck to their horses and they, they went and won the game and fair play to them as well. I mean, Stuart Dallas was ridiculous that game. He was all over the place. So yeah. I've got to give 100% credit to Leeds. I thought they were going to get battered and they didn't. And they conceded only one goal with 10 men against Man City. And the fight, can I just say, um, and Sam, we were watching the game together. I know you can agree. The way City conceded that last goal at the end, was very, very, very yeah, bad. Like, yeah, if man. you look at the way they conceded, the John Stones, a mistake he made. With 10 men like that, and you're giving the ball away on the halfway line, and that, that late on in the game, you can't, you, any player can't be doing that. So, Imagine I think they'll fans. look at them, they'll look at them, and they'll, they'll look at themselves and be disappointed in that, and think they could have yeah. probably got a point. But, nah, credit credit to Leeds where it was. They went and they beat, they beat the champions, basically the champions. So, credit to them. Big up to Leeds, and I was lucky. I was going to take uh, Stuart Dallas out of my fantasy Premier League. So, oh my God, luckily, boy. I forgot to change my team, <laughs> and he gave me a rocking 17 points. <laughs> See that? But yeah, Alex, over to you. Your thoughts on the, on, on the game? Yeah, um, no, nah, when I when I uh, before the game kicked off, I definitely said City's gonna it's gonna be like a 3 1 3 2 to City. Um, you know, I think you would have been brave to sort of guess otherwise, you know. Um, but when when um, Leeds scored that first goal, again, I was even surprised. I was like, that's Leeds, you know, they're going to score a goal and concede a couple, you know. Um, and then when they went out of 10 men, I was like, a couple's going to be a lot. But um, one thing I can say about um, their manager is he did go a little bit more defensive. I don't know if it was because of the 10 men, but Leeds normally play that free-flowing football and this non-stop, you know, attacking, attacking. And he he was a little bit more tired at the back, more and um, sort of tried, tried getting um, Man City on the counter. And even before um, Leeds scored their, their second goal, I think it was Rafinha could have... Um, he went one-on-one with, um, mm. with City's keeper and that should have been a goal in itself. So, now nah, all, all fair credit to... Um, to Leeds, man, they've done they've done really well to pull that off. Thank you, and definitely just want to put a caveat, please, everybody. The Premier League show, please, if you're enjoying the content, please hit that like button and subscribe to your boys. Sam, just putting it also out there, this ain't financial advice, but you were <laughs> saying the Leeds, you had predicted a Leeds victory. You, I can see that smile on your face. Yeah, yeah, Go yeah. ahead, tell us. Why you knew that Leeds were going to bring this over? Well, league. put it this way. I didn't think they were going to win it in the way they did it yesterday with 10 men. Don't get me wrong. That was a surprise. Um, however, I, I based it around the fact that um, City, one fact was that they played the Champions League game, Borussia Dortmund. That's not over yet. So they still got that to kind of take into consideration. The other thing is, Leeds are the type of team that I don't think City actually like. Mm. You know, in terms of that all-out pressure, all over them. And I keep saying, if you do that to Manchester City, their defence has got a rick in them. Because as good as John Stones has been, he's still got a mistake in him, in my opinion. And the way that Leeds kind of had the all energy, I just thought that there was something in it for them. When they went down to 10 men, I was like, oh no, this is not going to be my prediction. But they played well. They played well in terms of what they had to do. They didn't have many shots on goal, but they still kept up the same energy, the same. They were attacking just as much as they were having to defend. Where you look, a lot of the times you see teams go down to 10 men and it's trying to like, we're going to have to try and play counter-attack. It weren't just counter-attack. They were still building up play and they were still doing things. And like Darius was saying, that goal at the end, that just comes down to Manchester City just doing what Manchester City do, trying to chase the whole thing, throwing everybody. They should never get caught out 
with 10 men and be overloaded at the back where they got you on a counter attack. But they were. And these are the sort of things which makes me believe possibly, possibly that Spurs have still got a chance in this Carabao Cup final. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad Leeds got the victory. At least it shows now that if they are beatable. That's all I'll say. They are beatable. I was going to ask Sam, do you think that um, I was just going to think about the England uh, England game earlier on. Stones made a similar mistake as well in that game. Do you think that Diaz is as important as he seems to be? Or do you think it was just an off game for, for the City defence? Because I personally think that Diaz is is so key to that defence. It's, it's ridiculous. It's almost like Van Dijk. It's leadership. It's leadership. Once Diaz is in that back line, he leads them. He pulls people around. He gets them back into position. So John Stones is a prime example of a player that can look a lot better with the right player alongside him. If you play him alongside somebody else who's very similar to him, he would look awful. Once he's got someone there that's more stable, he can afford to be a little bit more of a ball player. He can afford to maybe take a risk or two because somebody else is going to pick up the pieces. I, I, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's an English thing, but um, John Stone just reminds me of or well, Maguire reminds me of John. No, nah, no, nah, Maguire. Um, because Maguire needs a Diaz or someone like that next yeah, season, then he'll probably yeah. Do you know what I mean? So hundred percent. Yeah. And Maguire, uh, I said, I, I, Maguire's okay for me. Maguire is is I wouldn't say overrated, but certainly a lot of people think he's better than he is. I, I've technically I, I don't. He's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, Maguire's. He's, he's okay. Mm. That's about it. He's, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying he's okay. But if he's got somebody, yeah. yeah, technically he's not. I don't yeah. think he's great. But if you get someone alongside him that's a good player that can, you know, John, I mean, Harry, come back here, do this. He could probably look yeah. a lot better than he is. And that's the way mm. England need to just think about this. But to give, you know, to, to well, Man United have given him the captain's arm bang. I think that's a lot of pressure. <sighs> but anyway, that's a different story. Let's move on. Time to take 